I was reading an article recently about the PTSD tsunami that we're likely to see as a result of COVID. Uh, and PTSD impacts the brain in various ways. So there's reduced activity in the prefrontal cortex, which is where we think logically. Reduced activity in the hippocampus, long-term memory lives there, and hyperactive response in the amygdala, which processes fear. Can you walk me through, um, yeah, the, the process of how PTSD impacts the brain and how MDMA also interacts with that? Yeah, so I, I guess one of the veterans that was in our study, our phase two study, for MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for PTSD, said uh, PTSD changed my brain and MDMA changed it back. All right, so the factors that you have just discussed um, in the brain, um, the hyperactive amygdala, the reduction of activity in the prefrontal cortex, the reduction of, act of connectivity with the hippocampus, so that what you have is these traumatic memories that um, actually themselves are rewiring the brain. You end up having more activity in certain areas. You can have more neural connective, certain kind of pathways, certain sounds that um, might remind one of something that was uh, in battle or something like that. The, the fact that the logical part of the brain is diminished in activity, there's not a lot of processing to say that's just a car backfire or that's just a door slam or, you know, I'm not in a situation where there's bombs falling or guns firing. So we have people that end up where the past has so um, subsumed the present. The present is, you're not living in the present, you're living in the past. You're living with this sense that the trauma is about to happen again, or is still happening, or you're always on guard, or you can, so what MDMA does, and, and I'm not to say that this is only from MDMA, you can get this from really good psychotherapy. Sometimes, sometimes people need more than psychotherapy. That's what we have proved in our, our research that um, some people can get better from psychotherapy, but a lot of people, it's too painful, their memories, they need some help. So the MDMA reduces activity in the amygdala so that um, it really has this ability to help people to have these fearful memories without the fearful emotions. Also MDMA, enhances people's activity in the prefrontal cortex. So we are more logical. We can, and we can tell ourselves a different story. And at the same time, there's more connectivity between the amygdala and the hippocampus. So that these memories from the past that have never been fully processed and put into long-term storage can now be put into long-term storage so that they're happening then, but not now. And there's a whole process of, um, fear extinction and memory reconsolidation. What that means is that um, when you can um, extinguish the fear of certain kind of memories, then when you reconsolidate the memory, when you put it back, you, you are swapping out the new emotion with the old emotion. So we see people's memory for the trauma is enhanced. They have a better sense of what actually happened to them. But when they remember it again after the therapy, they remember that they had processed it, it's in the past. The, the other thing that MDMA does that's, I think, very important to notice is the um, release of oxytocin. And oxytocin is the love hormone, the nursing mothers, when, you're, when people are in love. And it's um, something that permits self-acceptance, self-love. So while you have all of this reduction in fear about difficult emotions, what MDMA does is it helps people to accept themselves. So if I had to, you know, condense what everything, what MDMA does, um, it's self-acceptance. And, and because you are accepting yourself, you can look at your flaws or you can listen to people share with you their opinions on you. That's why it's so good for couples therapy because you're not so defensive. Your, your, your sense of self is not so vulnerable. You've accepted yourself that, that you have this sort of self-love, self-compassion. And I think that's a key part of what MDMA does. And there's been a uh, neuroscientists at Johns Hopkins, uh, Gould Dolan, who has done studies in mice and shown that MDMA produces a release of oxytocin in mice, but it doesn't end there. It produces new neural connections. And so you are actually helping to rewire your brain. You can, and that's where the importance of the integration afterwards, you can have these experiences and 
start a process, but you, if you don't try to reinforce it after the drug is gone, it might just fade. But if you have both the preparation, the experience and the integration, then you can make these really long-term changes with a relatively short-term intervention. Do you think that self-acceptance is largely due to a new story that you're telling about yourself? No, I don't think so. I, I think that the self-acceptance is more biologically mediated. And then once you have the self-acceptance, then you can tell a new story. And, and um, uh, so here, I'll give you an example. And, and this is just such a, um, a, a good example, which was um, one of the vets in our study was uh, back from via, from Iraq, had terrible um, PTSD. And the story was that um, the warrior self of, from Iraq, when he came back, that he had to in, put it in a cage. You know, that, that this was, and, and his problem was rage. He had problems with, with very quick rage. He never beat up his wife, but he you know, threw things and he had this problem with rage. So under the influence of MDMA, he was able to say to himself um, and, and do this in imagery and metaphor. And so while his eyes closed, listening to music, he's having this sense that there's this gorilla type with uh, blood red eyes, evil eyes locked in a cage inside him and that that's this part of himself. And that he realized that he's, um, he didn't trust what that person, that part of him could do from what happened in Iraq, but that he could, um, he wasn't making it any better by keeping this in a cage. He had the, so they had all these images of this gorilla reaching through the bars of the cage, stabbing him with a knife in the side. He would take the knife out and then he would unlock the cage and then he would make friends with this part of himself. And that was the new story that, that he could negotiate in a sense with these split off parts of himself and that he could re-embrace them. And that was his first MDMA session and he never had a problem with rage again. He still had other work to do to get over PTSD fully. But I think that this self-acceptance um, comes first and then comes the new story. And the self-acceptance, you say, is um, due to the biological effect. So the, the impact that MDMA can have on the brain, which can allow that new story to come through after. Yeah. And once the MDMA is gone, once you've got this new story, it can sustain, it can persist, it can be durable. 